Yeah, morning traders. After last week's event-ridden deluge, there is more in store. We've got a Bank of England meeting, an RBA meeting, we've got a payrolls number in, in the US, and of course we've got Apple's numbers coming through, about 15% of the S&P market cap reporting this week. With the S&P only 5% away from an all-time high. There is so much more in store. We look at interest rate pricing and how this data may go down. I'll see you on the upside. Yeah, morning traders and welcome to New Trading Week Ahead. I feel like I've aged about five years or so after last week's event risk. And what do we see? We saw obviously the China Political Bureau meeting, so the ECB meeting, the Fed meeting, and of course the Bank of Japan meeting on Friday, where we continue to watch what happens with 10-year JGBs and of course 10-year swaps as well. Now I think the word Nirvana or Goldilocks continues to come up, certainly in terms of the US and the exceptionalism story. Now we saw a GDP number at 2.4% annualized which is certainly above trend. At the same time, the ECI and the PCE inflation numbers were coming down. And so that resilience at the time when the market believes the Fed had done uh, very much keeping equities buoyed up. Uh, this week, we are watching US earnings. I think it's the last big week. We do have about 15% of the S&P market cap reporting, certainly Apple, Amazon, and to an extent, Qualcomm get the, uh, the sort of share of attention here. Uh, on Thursday. And I think, yeah, Apple really much the dominant uh, stock there. The stock's gunning for a fifth quarter in a row where we see share price gains playing through. The market's expecting about a 3% move on the day of earnings. Now, of course, the s and is only 5% from an all-time high. Uh, so something I'm watching very closely. Now, in the session ahead, we do get the SLUs report. That's the Senior Loan Officers Survey. This is where they're surveying about 80-odd banks or so. Uh, to see you know, lending conditions and you know, whether we're seeing a credit contraction playing through. Uh, we are expecting some tightening of, of credit conditions to play through. The Fed have made that pretty clear in the, in the last statement there. Uh, we are watching the, the, the banks and certainly the KRE, the regional banking ETF, has had a good gain recently, as you can see. Uh, and we're expecting after a little bit of a pullback potential for, for this to may, move into, say, 53, 53.50, sort of that kind of area. And watching the XLF as well very closely on the day. Now, in terms of other data in the US, which could drive uh, the US dollar um, and, and other markets as well, we've got the ISM manufacturing number. The market's expecting that at 46.9. Uh, so from 46, that's a, a slightly better pace, but still a contraction. Uh, we've got splutterings of jobs data ahead of payrolls with the ADP uh, and the JOLTS job opening reports that come through. Uh, we've got services ISM. Now, this doesn't necessarily cause a reaction historically, but I think given the market's so intent on looking at how the service sector is performing, I think this could get a bit of a look in, and the market's expecting that to, to, to grow at a slightly slower pace at 53 on the diffusion index there. And of course, we've got payrolls at the back end of the week. The market's expecting 200,000, so another good, healthy level of job creation to come through with a distribution uh, of analyst expectations going from 270 down to about 150,000 as well. Now, of course, importantly, we do get that um, unemployment rate. The market's expecting that to come in at 3.6%. And the average hourly, on, uh, hourly earnings, which could be actually the, probably the most important number out of this, uh, expected to slow down a little bit to 4.2%. Now, you can see from US rates prices, the Fed are completely data dependent, but the market seems to believe that they are done now on their hiking cycle. So we'll see if this data this week uh, impacts that at all. We've got September being priced at 5.38, which gives you about five basis points of tights. It's about a 19% probability of a hike there. Go out to November, which is the sort of terminal, the peak pricing there, we've got it at 5.44. So really the market's saying it's about a 36% chance the, rate, the Fed raise again. Of course, we are watching this data this week just to see if uh, that November meeting becomes more sort of a live meeting. Where we do see uh, rates decision is in Australia and the UK. And if we focus on the UK, uh, the market is saying, as you see from rates pricing for, for August, uh, that's currently priced at 33 basis points, about a 30% chance that the, uh, that the Bank of England raised by 50. So really, the market's saying we could get 50, which is a proactive hike, or 125 basis points, which is something a bit more data reactive. They're saying on balance that we, uh, we expect a 25 basis point hike there. We do have other aspects to watch in the UK this week. You know, we've got nationwide house prices to look at. We've got consumer credit data. Uh, but generally speaking, it's the Bank of England meeting, which is obviously going to be the big one there. Uh, and, the, and the analysts are certainly leaning on 25 basis points. We have had a bit of a pullback in cable, as you can see. But one week implied vols in cable sitting around 9.6%, which is 14th percentile of the 12 month range. So really, the market's not expecting big fireworks in the pound. Uh, we've also got a rate decision in, in Australia. We've got a statement of monetary policy later this week as well. Um, but generally speaking, the market is leaning towards a 25 basis point hike in terms of what the economists are. Uh, as you can see here from rates pricing, we've got about six basis points of, of, of tights being priced in. So about 20% chance that the, the RBA raise rates this week. I think that's probably underpricing because I say the economists, as you can see here, are certainly calling for it. We've got 15 of 26 
who are calling for that 25 basis point hike. So yeah, we could see some, some short term liveliness coming through in the Aussie dollar because the economists are calling for it. Uh, the market's certainly underpricing that one. Uh, and what you can see from, from Aussie vols, we've got a currently about 11.6%, which is a 28th percentile. So the market's saying that you know, we're not going to expect fireworks from this. Now, I think, of course, we've got to watch our eyes on China because I think the biggest correlation for the Aussie dollar is against the dollar CNH. Uh, we do have China manufacturing numbers this week. I'm not sure how much the market's going to look at those ones coming through, uh, given that you know, the stimulus from the Politburo is yet to feed through. Uh, in Europe, you can see uh, the rates price. We've got about 10 basis points being priced for the next uh, ECB meeting. Uh, so yeah, not, not a lot being priced in for that. Uh, and we've got you know, terminal priced around 380 going into December. Uh, so about 18 basis points of tights there. So again, the ECB... You know, thoroughly kind of in this data dependent mode there. I think you've got PMI numbers towards the back end of the week. They are a revision, so we're not expecting them to move the dial too, frankly. Uh, but we do have European CPI numbers coming in the session ahead, and I do think they will move the dial. The market's expecting the estimate to come at 5.3%, uh, with core at 5.4% there as well. So that could really shape up these expectations around the ECB, where the market is saying that they expect them to be done here. So a big week ahead, trade it with Pepstone.